Hello lovely people, how are you all today? I hope you're well, <laughs> I am. I'm carrying on from the video a couple of days ago um, talking about getting organised. So I'm still in my little snuggly corner here. Uh, I alluded to, and I'm going to talk about it a bit more detail today, the, the subject of decluttering because I know a lot of you are still <laughs> drowning in stuff. So I'm just going to give you a few ideas, hopefully a few ideas today. At least this is what I do. Again, I'm not saying I'm right, I'm perfect, this is the only way. None of that. <laughs> I would not be so arrogant. I'm just showing it because this is the way I do it and it seems to work for me and it seems to really help me. And I do have quite a chaotic <laughs> life in some ways, but this is how it sort of, I stay on top of things in terms of clutter. So, and in a way, hopefully you will have sort of touched on this first thing a bit if you did your budgeting for the year, as we talked about a couple of weeks ago. In that process, hopefully you will have gathered together things like bank statements, bills, anything that you still get on paper. So the first thing I'm going to talk about today is, is paper everything that's on paper and decluttering your paper because I think it's the thing we should always tackle first because it might be the stuff that's the most important stuff within your home that's even possibly lost. Things like guarantees, receipts, over demands for some a payment that's overdue, that sort of thing. So what I suggest to start with is I mean, it depends how cluttered you are. I mean, if you're cluttered to the to the degree of hoarding, for instance, if you've got a spare room, conservatory, that sort of thing, that you can no longer get into because it's floor to ceiling boxes and stuff, it may be a bit harder. But yeah, stage one is the admin bit go around every room in the house probably not the bathroom i wouldn't have thought the bathroom i hope not the bathroom you might need to take a bag with you you might need to take two or three bags with you every room in the house every drawer in every room every cupboard whatever it is and get together all your bits of paper even if it's things like old magazines that you've kept for a recipe bills you've shoved in the back of drawers, um, manuals, you know, the, yeah, manuals. Is there another word for it? I just, I suddenly can't think of the word for, you know, when you get a new camera and you've got a manual for it. Yes, yeah, manuals, guarantees, bits and bobs of receipts, literally everything. Get it all together. And you might, if you've got a big kitchen table, I mean, can you actually get to your kitchen table are you so cluttered that you can't use your kitchen table anymore? Uh, so therefore you might need to do it on the floor if you've got floor space. But gather all those bits of paper together. Have you got a shredder? Can you borrow a shredder if you don't have one? Do you have a recycling bin or bin bags at your property? Because <clears throat> hopefully there's going to be a load you can chuck to the recycling, <clears throat> you might need to shred it first. <clears throat> and it's obvious. <laughs> Go through everything and categorise all those bits of paper. So one pile might be bills, one pile might be bank, building society, etc. statements. One pile might be your mortgage statements, if you've got a mortgage. One pile might be birthday cards and Christmas cards. Um, uh, there may what else might you might have things like so yeah the manuals for your electronics guarantees you know your fridge freezers and all those kind of things they come with a manual they come with a guarantee you might have receipts to do, so put them into little piles of different categories then once they're all in separated piles tackle one pile at a time and if it's things like manuals and guarantees for the stuff in your home I'm willing to bet, because even I had this, I, I went through mine again recently, so at the tail end of last year, uh, there will, you will have manuals and guarantees in your drawers for things you no longer own, 
<laughs> something that broke ages ago and you chucked the item out, but you still got the manual or the guarantee or the receipt. You don't need them, they can go in the recycling. And hopefully then you'll be just left with the manuals and guarantees if it's still in guarantee for just the things you own. And I would suggest what I do with that is I've got a folder. Of course I've got a folder because I'm organised. <laughs> is to put them in either hole punch each manual, if you can get a hole punch through it, to put it in your folder. I'm talking about A4 ring binders. Or you can put it into an envelope and hole punch the envelope and put that in with a label on to say what it is, washing machine, manual and guarantee. But hopefully just dealing with those, you'll chuck out a load of the old ones for things you no longer own. You may have manuals and guarantees in there for things that you own but you don't use. Hang on to those for now because as you declutter, if you find that camera that you no longer use, and you found the camera manual, you can pair them up because then when you come to hopefully sell them, you might just not necessarily get more money for them, but you might beat someone else on eBay who's selling the same thing, but yours will go because you've got the manual still. So only chock it if you no longer own that item at all. If it's something you no longer use, maybe have a separate envelope to put all those manuals in so that later down the line when you find that item to sell, there's the manual. Bills. Generally, we, we only need to keep the last three months of bills. You can get rid of those. Hopefully, you know, if it might be one of those things to put on your to-do list is to get in touch with your supplier and if you're happy working online, is to convert to paperless billing so you only ever have it on the computer. If you prefer to have your paper bills, keep three months worth, keep six months worth if you prefer. Again, I've got mine organized in one of those sort of, you know, those expanding A to Z folders. And then when a new bill comes in, the oldest bill gets thrown away. We're gonna get into that habit of one in, one out. I'll explain that a bit more. But yeah, get all the bills together for each supplier. Anything over six months old, chuck it. But you may want to just take the top bit off that's got your name, address, account number on and shred it. That's why I was mentioning getting a shredder to hand. You may, <laughs> if you've not really been organised for a really long time, you may find bills for a supplier that you no longer use even. They can go. Bank statements. And I mean, unless you're expecting to be in some kind of <laughs> law, sort of lawsuit situation, uh, you just don't need to keep them. If something came up in the future, if someone was trying to sue you for something and you needed to prove, you can always go back to your bank and ask for a printout of that particular month's uh, statement. But yeah, it's nothing. That's the kind of easy stuff to deal with. Then we come on to the slightly harder stuff like birthday cards and Christmas cards. I would suggest allowing yourself to only keep one shoebox worth. Just look, no, it, there's no two ways about it. Getting rid of stuff that's personal and sentimental like that is much harder. But if you've gone around all your nooks and crannies and you found three carrier bags worth of birthday cards and Christmas cards, why, oh, why, oh, why? I and mean, if you want to keep all of them, I'm not telling you what to keep and what to get rid of. I sort of am. Um, but you know what? Put them all in a box, neatly in a box, rather than just having them everywhere. But the idea with this declutter is to just stop being weighed down by all this stuff where you, you can't think straight because you can't find anything because there's just stuff everywhere. Things like magazines that you've kept because you want to clip out a recipe. I would suggest that if that magazine's two or more years old and you still haven't made the recipe, you're not going to. Give, you know, if it's, if all the magazines are interesting and they're in decent condition, offer them to your doctor's surgery or the dentist's surgery. They may like to have them in their waiting room. Offer them to your, um, offer them to a charity shop 
because some charity shops take magazines, things like gardening magazines and crafting magazines. You may have, oh my goodness, you may have five, ten years worth of gardening magazines and you say, I'm going to keep them because there's useful information in there. But honestly, how many times have you ever gone back to a gardening magazine from six years ago to find that one particular article about mycorrhizal fungi, for instance? Because the other thing about magazines is there's no index. You can't find, you would have to know. See what I mean? But things like gardening magazines and crafting magazines, my local charity shops do sell. So offer them, offer them to places. But just whatever you do, get rid of them. I'm, I'm not going to guarantee anything, but I almost want to say, I'm kind of almost wanting to guarantee you are not going to reread them. And how many years have you been saying to yourself, oh, I'm going to read it again. I'm going to read, oh, there was that article. And if there's one article in one of those magazines that you really, really, really love because, I don't know, the words touch you, are beautiful, whatever, then cut it out. Cut that article out and put it into a scrapbook and keep it that way. And then you have a scrapbook full of things which are really lovely and meaningful rather than stacks and stacks of magazines which are in your way and dragging you down. So yeah, I would say with the declutter, first things first, start with paper because amongst all that paper, there may be important things like birth certificates, exam certificates, um, you never know what you, you might find <laughs> that needed attending to some time ago. Let's get on and attend to it. But yeah, the important things that... Sorry, I just, lost, <laughs> just saw something out the corner of my... I keep losing my train of thought today. Um, being able to track down those important documents and once and for all putting them somewhere safe, having a little... Either that expandiator Z folder or having A4 ring binders, however you choose to, to keep your papers, keep them in one place and keep them safe. And then going forward, and it's like I was talking about the other day when I was talking about organisation. And remember, remember, all of this, all of this, that organisation stuff, the decluttering, all of it is about freeing you up to be lighter, happier, more joyful, having time to do wonderful things like gardening and knitting and all those things without that kind of like, oh, it's weighing on me, it's, I can see it in the corner of my eye, etc. But going forward with your paperwork, remember I was saying how on a Sunday afternoon, evening, I sit down and I do my plan for the following week. That's also when I deal with my paperwork. I've got a bit of a rule. <laughs> I mean, it's not rigid. I don't get punished <laughs> if I don't follow it. But generally, it's a rule of, with all paper things, to handle them only once. Um, if I have to handle them twice, it's sometime later and I know where they are. In other words, Sunday evening, all the mail that has come, uh, whether it's bills do I get any bills in the post these days I, I do get some um whatever it is whatever's come in the post I have it in a stack and on a Sunday evening when I'm doing my plan for next week I also do my plan for my Monday admin session so if it's things I need to attend to attend to I can put it on my list if it's a call I need to make to query a bill if it's whatever it is when I open my mail, that piece, of, that piece of paper immediately gets filed. Okay, here's a better example. <laughs> I should have thought about this, I'm so sorry. Let's say um, my fuel bill. My fuel bill arrives, I open the envelope, I read the bill and I think, that's fine, that's all correct. I file it. So I go to my A to Z folder, I put that bill at the front, I remove the last bill, because it's three months ago, that bill gets shredded, dealt with, I'm done. I never have to touch that piece of paper again, unless later on there's a query and I need to refer to it. But otherwise, 
I've opened my mail, I've dealt with my bill, it's gone straight away. The exception is I open it and I think, oh, there's something I need to query on this. That's for next Monday's admin session. So it goes on my desk. Unless it needs immediate attention, in which case I'll attend to it immediately. But either way, after it's been dealt with, phone call or Monday admin session, it goes into the folder. Done. Never touched again. Yeah, it's. I find that a really useful rule with paper. It's specifically paper. Only touch it once. So again, with your magazine, if you read your magazine and there's something in there that's really lovely that's touched you, maybe there's a photograph, an image, and it's really beautiful, clip it out there and then and put it in your scrapbook. Lovely. Chuck the mag in the recycling. Or better still, pass it to a friend. You know, say to your friend, I've cut something out, but otherwise, I have this magazine, it was a nice read. I think um, um, the similar to the, with the paper of touch it only once, I also have this little rule of one in, one out. <laughs> so that once you have managed to declutter, um, if you bring something into the home, so for me, that would be a book. If I bring a new book into the home, one of my old books has got to go. But actually that's been okay recently because I'm literally reading a book and immediately passing it on either to a friend, to the charity shop. If I think it's something that one of you may want to buy, it goes into my shop. But yeah, if something comes in, something goes out. Let's say you've done all your paperwork and like I said, I think you know, thinking about when I did that for Auntie Teapot, the paper alone it took about, and I was there all the time, it took me about two weeks because there were papers going back decades, decades, and I had to go through everything really carefully to make sure that I wasn't accidentally with something else throwing out, say, the deeds to the house, or, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, I, I hope it's needless to say, but I'll say it anyway, but things like that, all those really important documents, birth certificate, if it's, if it's applicable, um, educational certificates, um, your, your mortgage, your house deeds, the lease to your property, all those things, they should be together in a safe place. I, I hope that goes without saying. But if, if nothing else, then if there's a house fire, you can grab that and scarper and you've got your life in a, in a, in a folder. Get that paper stuff done and hopefully that's the beginning of a huge chunk of relief for you in this decluttering process. But then, oh boy, then it really starts, doesn't it? I find the easiest way to declutter is to sort of go by category and really quite narrow categories. So you might think clothes. And again, if you live in a bigger house than me, I'm sure most of you do live in bigger properties than me, you may actually have clothes all over the place in your home. You may have boxes of clothes clothes in the loft. You may have boxes of, of clothes in your cellar. You may have clothes in the spare room, in the laundry room. Da -da 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 -da. And it's the same principle for any kind of, any category of the decluttering, I think, is to go for one category, like clothes, and get them all together in one place. Be ruthless. Be absolutely ruthless. Even if, you know, a pile of ironing. Um, you may have some of your co clothes in your kids' um, bedroom. You may have some of, if you're, maybe you're, you've got an elderly parent that's living with you, you may have some of your clothes in their room. Wherever it is, get everything together. Absolutely everything. Now, everything together may be overwhelming in one go, so you might say, all I can manage today, because I think this is the big thing about decluttering, isn't it? It can be overwhelming in two ways. It can be overwhelming to see 
all that junk, because let's face it, a lot of it's going to be junk, amassed in one place. That's overwhelming. You may see it all together and think, oh my God, how much money have I wasted? Don't, don't go there. <laughs> Just don't go there. You'll do yourself a disservice. Don't, please don't any of you guilt yourselves about what you've done in the past. There's no point, can't change that. This is about getting sorted now to have an easier life going forward. But yeah, overwhelming to see everything in one go, but also overwhelming to start to try to let go of stuff. So if all the clothes together, I think you should get all the clothes together, but in your very first session, you may say to yourself, right, I'm feeling really overwhelmed. All I can handle today is t-shirts. Just keep it as simple as that. So in that huge, maybe you've, may, if you've got a spare bedroom and it's on the spare bed, maybe you've got all the clothes there on the spare bed and it's a mountain. Go through that mountain, find all the t-shirts. And then you can start properly going through things. There may be some which are absolutely full of holes and useless. Now you might, sorry, excuse me, you might say to yourself, oh, well, I'll keep them for rags. But hang on a minute, how many rags have you got? Because <laughs> if you've already got a cupboard full of rags for cleaning, there's no point. You don't need any more rags. Things that are really holy and are worthless, you can give them to a rag bank where they'll be shredded. Charities. Ask at your local charity shop. Uh, now, let's assume everything else is in good order, is, is lovely and wearable. Be honest with yourself. <laughs> Why do you need 75 t-shirts, even 50 t-shirts? You need a few for summer, as in short-sleeved, maybe even vest, and a few for winter, long-sleeved. You may want a few in, you know, different colours, but probably <laughs> you only need 20 t-shirts at most. So with the rest, what are you going to do? Either to charity or to sell on eBay. I would say probably selling t-shirts on eBay, maybe it's not worth it unless you sell a whole big bundle, unless they're brand new with tags still and they've come from a nice, you know, a label. But yeah, immediately you want to get them out of your house as soon as you can. Don't dither. <laughs> don't. I think the big thing that you don't want to do with decluttering is is simply move things from one pile to another pile. You still got them, they're still a pile. You need to get them out. And, you know, using clothes as the example, if that's all you, get the paper done first. Please do the paper first, just in case. Um, but if, if clothes are the first thing you tackle, when you're doing your plan of your hours and your days, plan in time for dealing with the stuff that you want to get rid of. So if you've sorted a pile that's for a charity shop, maybe you finish doing your sorting and your decluttering, it's nine, 10 o'clock at night. Of course you can't go to the charity shop then, but get them bagged up and make that your priority for the next morning. They are going to the charity shop the next morning. And maybe there are a few items, <clears throat> excuse me, that you'd like to sell on eBay. Okay, that's next weekend's job. So instead of say, decluttering the kitchen the next weekend, the next weekend, get on with selling your eBay items, which will mean washing, pressing them, photographing them. The only exception to that would be if your home is such a cluttered mess, there's no way you can hang a dress to photograph it without all your junk in the background, in which case you may need to set them aside in a box until you can declutter. But yeah, allocate that time post declutter of whichever category you're doing to then deal with what you're getting rid of. Don't just put boxes on the other side of the room because all you're doing is you're just moving the clutter from one side of the room to the other. That's not decluttering. Um, <clears throat> that thing about getting everything together in one place, I think is really useful because we are visual creatures, humans. And I think it's easy when things are scattered in different rooms. We're only in one room at a time, aren't we? So what you see in that room is, is maybe you think, well, it's not that bad. 
But if everything's brought together from all the different rooms, an example of this is a friend of mine that did this recently. I don't know how, how she got into such a state, but I'd given her this, she'd asked me about decluttering. So I said, okay, start small. And so I said, because I thought this would be a really small start to help her. I said, why don't you start with toiletries? That's a really quite a small one. She had them all over her house, goodness knows how. Anyway, so she brought everything together in one, uh, one place. She brought everything to the kitchen because that seemed like a sensible place to do it. And then if there are any spills, obviously our kitchen surfaces are all wipeable, aren't they? But she had, you know, there was something like 15 shampoo bottles, most of them like half used. Uh, just, I mean, it was crazy, like makeup removers, makeup, this, that, that brushes you know like 12 hair brushes and just an absolute crazy amount of toiletries <clears throat> so then we got things organized um she had some plastic crates as it was right all the shampoos go in there all the dirt dirt dirt, dirt. use them up before you buy any more you only ever need to have two shampoos in your house, one that's on the go and a spare one in the cupboard for if that one runs out and you're, I don't know, you can't get to the shops for whatever reason that day. You know, when the one that runs out, runs out, chuck it in the recycling, bring the one out of the cupboard and put it, you know, in the bathroom. And then on your shopping list, you can write shampoo to replace the cupboard one. One in, one out. Um, yeah, and then also it helps in terms of not overspending as well. If you've got stuff scattered to the winds, or, you know, <laughs> scattered. If you've got your bottle of shampoo in the bedroom, there's like, and you go, oh, I've got no shampoo, and you go out and spend money on some shampoo, and say, oh no, I had some already. Urgh. Yeah, I, I think it also comes back to that thing, doesn't it, of buying stuff for momentary gratification, momentary happiness. If you find yourself in the shampoo aisle continually browsing and, oh, this is a pretty bottle and, oh, that's a lovely smell. Oh, I'll have one, I'll have one. Mm -mm -mm. You've got 15 bottles of shampoo, half used at home. Tell yourself, I am not buying shampoo until all of these have been used up. I think, I was it when I did my declutter a year and a bit ago? It wasn't that my toiletries were scattered, they're all in one place. Um, but, because I don't use much, I because I use my own homemade stuff, I use my calendula oil and balm. I do occasionally forget what I've got in my, I've got a little basket that I put spares and extras in. And I had a little go through, I thought, oh, I'd actually got quite a lot of like body creams and stuff that have been part of um, Christmas gift packs. So I thought, yeah, I don't, I, I don't need to make any balm for a while. I'll use all this up. Also things like, I put hand cream on in the other video. It's not hand cream. It was some body butter that someone had given me for Christmas last year. But because I don't tend to use it because I use my own stuff, I thought, well, I know I've got it from that going through my little declutter. I'll use that instead of hand cream. Works perfectly well. So I think, look, you get the point, don't you? I think the main two points are, you know, there's, there's, okay, let's have three main points outside of doing the paper declutter. Do the paper first in case there's an important document somewhere that's going to go missing. Think about just doing one category of things at a time, whether it be clothes or if that's too much, just saying coats and jackets, but commit to it. If, if decluttering your whole home seems overwhelming in one go, just promise yourself, I am gonna deal with coats, hats and scarves. So pick a category and do it. A lot some time for dealing with the aftermath. In other words, the bags of stuff you want to get rid of. Don't forget to a lot some time for that so you can get to the charity shop. And then give yourself a kind of a little rule, if it helps, of that one in, one out thing. 
so that if you do find yourself with numerous bottles of shampoo and then while you're out at the supermarket if you find yourself drifting into the toiletries aisle and being attracted by pretty packaging you can say to yourself no Vivi <laughs> you've got shampoo if you see what I mean and hopefully by doing that you're gonna hopefully firstly declutter your home free yourself up secondly you might find items to sell great make a little bit of money but thirdly in future you can curb some of that if you've been a bit of a wasteful spender you can curb some of that i really really hope that will work for you and that can help so there we go i could honestly i love this subject i love to me i've got to get so excited declutter declutterizing that's not a word it is now let's have it declutterizing um organizing being sorted i love it i am ocd i am a neat freak it you know you know that from the edges of my grass paths in the garden i like having that order because once i have that order then in it i am i'm just free to be and do however i please it's great it's fab all right well i hope i've encouraged i hope i've enthused you to start having a go um be ruthless and be honest it's another of those ones where you need to be honest with yourself for instance if like me you've got size 10 clothes in the wardrobe sell them because <laughs> you ain't ever going to be a size 10 again um also honest in terms of if you're holding on to things for sentiment uh can you hold things here instead maybe if if you've got i think one of the really hard ones is when you've got a lot of stuff that's come from a deceased loved one so for instance for me say with auntie teapot you know i had her whole house to deal with and out of sentiment i could have kept everything but I'm not, I haven't got space to, that would be, it would be ridiculous for me, but you may have a whole room with, you know, if your a parent has recently died, it may be, may be too soon, I don't know, but is to get yourself a really beautiful little box, you know, it could just be an ordinary cardboard box, maybe that you decorate yourself, or a little wooden box, just something that's a bit more manageable, and having that things like photographs, letters, cards, um, some of their personal bits that they love, maybe a couple of bits of jewellery, maybe even an item of clothing. And if not an item of clothing, you know, with the things like the clothes, think about making a patchwork memory cushion. But again, it's one of those things, if you've had their clothes for 10 years and you've not made the patchwork memory cushion, you're probably not going to make it. Things like buttons. I've, I've got some buttons that were on one of Auntie Teapot's favourite dresses. So I whip the buttons off, I've got the buttons. But yeah, you know, with, with those really difficult sentimental things, I do get it because I'm very sentimental too. But you can't keep... So, you, you can't keep someone's whole life in your home if it's if it's stopping you from living your life so yeah you might have to be brave i think that one is the kind of thing that you might want to do with a really 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 good friend a close friend possibly even a sibling um and 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 try to get it down to just a really 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 special box that every now and again you can get out and go through those bits and pieces and maybe a smell of a piece of fabric, whatever it is. Ah, I don't mean that in a maudlin way. Um, right, I think that's enough for <laughs> this one. Give it a go. Don't let this decluttering thing hang, hang over you for yet another year. Make a start. Even the smallest start is a start. And try and have fun with it. All right, lovelies, I will see you again really soon. I don't know where, I don't know what we'll be doing. I ought to get to the garden at some point. 
<laughs> but not while it's freezing. I don't care. There's nothing really to do. I mean, it, there's tidying and stuff to do in the garden, but it's nothing that can't wait until it's a little bit warmer and a bit less wet. So yeah, I don't know where we'll be next, but we'll be somewhere together and that'll be lovely. So until then, please look after yourselves. Look after each other. Give each other a bit of help and support and love <clears throat> with all of this if it's a bit difficult. But more than anything, just be kind to yourself and to each other. Cheerio.